Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hi guys. I, Nava's here. I know we're in the podcast setting. This isn't a podcast, but we thought this setup would just be a little bit better and easier for us yes. to do a video for. So we get chat today. We have been working on something super excited together for the past month. Yes. You want to tell them what it is? We are going to release the armor of God through a mother's eye. I don't know how we're going to fully call it, but it's about the armor of God. Yep. We feel like there's just such a fire inside of us to encourage other yes. women. And that's what we also wanted to talk about in this episode too, is just friendship and community mm -hmm. and the importance of doing motherhood and life with other women, yes. other women who are also walking with the Lord and just so holding important. each other accountable. I feel like you can't talk about friendship without talking about the armor of God. Mm -hmm. And so we tried to break up the armor of God in a way that you've never really heard anyone else talk about it in a way yeah. that shows what that looks like in motherhood, what mm -hmm. it looks looks like day to day mm -hmm. what it looks like as a wife we're so excited i feel like we poured it out L literally if we could put our heart it out. on a yes. paper like on a pdf that y'all are about yes. to get that's what it would be i just kept going back and forth and being like no this isn't deep enough yeah this isn't and i would wait it was so cool i'd wait with the lord and i'd be like god give me words mm -hmm. i want to hear a rhythm mm -hmm. your heart for this i want to mm -hmm. hear your heart when i hear your heart i'll just start mm -hmm. pressing because mm -hmm. as a mom like writing i don't know how you do this yeah as often it, as you do you have to like go so from mom mode and you have someone's taking a within nap, a second step in so i fasted during this time social media and yeah. like i just got off things so i could mm -hmm. really only hear god's voice yeah that's so wise so. that's so wise we talk a lot about being sober minded too and just i don't know yes. a lot of the conversations that we talk about there mm -hmm. i feel like is from an approach in a different way that normally isn't talked about yes. or like when you hear your pastor talking about this it's normally a man that's cheering it yeah so it's going to be a different perspective of hearing women mothers wives talk about it and it's for women like mm -hmm. i don't want anyone to be discouraged and think they have to have children because yeah. one of the That's wisest a thing a single woman could do is prepare her heart prepare yes. herself for a season she longs to be in i mm -hmm. think it's foolish to wait until you're in the heart of the season to be like yeah. wait what am i supposed to do yeah i think it's very wise to, to prepare yeah prepare learn and like hang out with women so i love yeah. that we i feel like this is something that i i wish i had yeah as a single, even as a single woman, mm -hmm. I really want to encourage even single women to pick this up because mm -hmm. there's keys in here. Mm -hmm. And Milena and I are not theologians. We're not philosophers. We're not. Yeah. And it's very. This is just from a mother's. This yeah. is our experience. Mm -hmm. And we're not like, we're not perfect. We're not pros. But this is what God is teaching us. Mm -hmm. And we're still, I'm still working on the things. A lot of what I shared in there is like my day to day. Right. I'm trying to figure it out too. Mm -hmm. So it's just honest. It's mm -hmm. raw. It's mm -hmm. really raw. Mm -hmm. It's really raw. But it's like we go deep it's fast. <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited. I'm excited. This has been one of my favorite things to write because I feel like the Lord was just revealing so many different things yes. to me in the time of this. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if I'll like publicly share this yet, but I went through something really heavy during yeah. the time that Nava and I were writing it. And yeah. it's like, like it was just so funny to me that we were writing about the armor of God yes. and I'm going through this complete warfare and Nava and I are just completely shielding each other yes. like completely yes. so yeah that's why I feel like we keep mentioning the idea of the armor having to do so much with friendship so let's dive into that for a second yes what would you say is a toxic trait of a friend? Maybe we can talk about three things. Okay. A toxic trait from a friend that if there are these three red flags, they need to be pruned. Okay, so for me, when I'm hanging out with other women, mm -hmm. I feel like the one of the first things I notice is gossip. Dang it's it, contagious. Why don't I have my Bible with me? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I've been reading so much about gossip just the last couple of days. Even just yesterday, I literally opened up to my Bible and it was Ephesians 4. Oh my and gosh. And there's a lot in Ephesians that even talks yes. about gossip. Yes. There's there is. You're right. I was thinking and I didn't about even that the other day. Realize that, but oh, there's so much in Ephesians. You've got to read it. The whole book is fire. Gossip is definitely just because it's something that we love to do for some weird, yeah. it's our flesh. dark reason. It's the flesh, and we love like sometimes we come like Melena shared something yesterday with me mm -hmm. about a message that someone sent her, and mm -hmm. it was just like basically saying how they sat together and talked about someone. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was thinking about it's so easy to point your finger and be like why are you doing that? But mm -hmm. God is always 
always asking me, Nav, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Are you doing this? Yeah. And gossip, sometimes we flare it up to be a certain way. Gossip is just even asking a question that doesn't need to be asked. You know yes. what I mean? There's a step yes. further. And But the thing is, I feel like there's been such a fine line that the Christian community will, it's playing with fire. And I've just noticed, it's like, how can I pray for you? Yes. And, yes. Then, it, and then it starts this whole, or like, I want to be careful here. Yeah of what I say. Yeah. But I know that there's a lot of women who have probably been in this situation too, where it was like, that was straight up gossip yeah. with prayer attached to it. Yes. You know? Yes. And yeah, I feel That's... like we, we could really go deep into this, but I just want to caution a yes. lot of women to just be very careful. Yeah. If you want to hear a story that someone has gone through, they will personally tell you. Yes. If you're hearing it from someone exactly. else, it is gossip. If you're projecting someone something on someone else that you don't even know yeah out of trying to encourage other women that's, that's so that good, is Melina. gossip i think there's a fine line but that line is crossed 99 percent of the time and we do it in groups of women right we love to do it when we're together but have you noticed i don't know if you any girls in your group that do this but i have one girl in our group that is always on watch always on watch of what we're saying wow. most of the time i feel like it ends up being me because i'm like we gotta be careful here watch what you're gonna say yeah it's make sure so we're not easy. passing that line of gossiping yes. about this person yes. you know like make sure like we can inform each other like yeah. cool oh she got but, married she's yes. this but then the wedding is moment, this weekend the wedding can but be that's like, it yeah then we're it, done and yeah. we're moving on so yeah gossip so, would definitely be a first red flag yeah. what would you say is another you go i need a second to okay <laughs> I would say the tongue. Mm. I think the a person's tongue has a lot to say about them, obviously. <laughs> their tongue is literally what is coming out. Yeah. If so you good. are around someone, because I have found that sometimes you can be around people. If you leave a conversation feeling exhausted, drained, discouraged, and anything but yeah. convicted and closer to the Lord, yeah. yes. we got some issues. Yeah. You know? So I think how... So negativity. Yeah. Like a negative tongue. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I like that. I like that because yeah. it shows the inability to tame the tongue and then it shows the inability of, to speak life. And they're yes. clearly using their tongue for death over life. Yeah. I would say those two because, again, I think it's really easy to go hang out with your girlfriends yes. and be like and just want to rant and yes. word vomit and just like lay it out. But mm -hmm. I'm not supposed to lay out my problems no. on you. I'm supposed to lay it on the feet of Jesus. Yeah. And I think we so easily I don't know if it's just because girls want to do that. I don't know if it's because you're like physically here. Yeah. But I feel like it's so easy for women to want to do that. Yeah. But in the problem and process of doing that, we get festered and like that spark gets refired and like yes. it grows and it festers yes. and that anger. Like maybe it was something that you're talking about that happened with your husband earlier this week, but you bringing it up again, yeah. you're giving the enemy another yes. foothold. And that's what Ephesians 4 said. Yes. I kind of, I think yes, I should read Ephesians 4 or maybe it was five, but it literally talks about giving the devil a foothold. Yeah. And I think we just need to be super careful about that. Um, we do. We do because it's so easy. Misery loves company. And when we start talking about something even our husbands together mm -hmm. oh your husband my didn't does that too and you just start going on this rant about mm -hmm. i don't want to be i don't know about you but i don't want to mm -hmm. be around that no i want to be around women that talk so and again i'm not saying all marriages are perfect mm -hmm. but there's a way to speak in honor about our husbands yes and I know that sometimes they do things out of place. I'm not, I want to be wise about how I say this because in the last video we did, I feel like so many people misunderstood what I was saying. And mm -hmm. I think our convictions before the Lord, mm -hmm. our own convictions. Mm -hmm. And we just have to be wise as women, how we mm -hmm. represent our husbands. Yeah, that's true. And you can give enough information to ask for help without yes airing out all the dirty yes. laundry you yeah. can you don't have to share the exact thing yeah. that your husband is struggling yeah. with but you can say i need coverage this week or pick two How friends you pick two friends don't talk to everyone about it pick yeah. two friends and entrust them in it mm -hmm. share what you need to share but mm -hmm. maybe not in big group settings of yeah. all your girlfriends mm -hmm. like jesus had his 12 disciples but he had his closest three i love that you know it's important like he had his group and yeah. i feel like a group is so beautiful yeah but then he had his three that yeah. he went to and i think yeah. Yeah. There is such like I really do think we should apply how Jesus was with his disciples with their friendships too. Yeah. Like I feel like he was like, here, this is what a good friendship mm -hmm. looks like. Take it and run with it. Um, I can give an example. Like I deal with fear. So if, if fear is just like coming in so hard and there's something I'm dwelling on that I'm just really I'm not sleeping good at night because mm. I'm so worried about whatever it is. Yeah. Instead of talking about it to all my girlfriends, mm -hmm. I pick two 
Mm. to really share listen i need you to be praying for me this mm-hmm. is what's going on mm-hmm. because if you talk about it too much guess what it becomes the the forefront of your mind and you're yeah. always going to be thinking about it mm. and then you're literally putting yourself in that that fear has become your world mm. so it's just wise yes to not always talk about what's going on with mm-hmm. everyone but mm-hmm. pick two people mm-hmm. and then with the rest don't let it become your whole world because mm-hmm. that's exactly, I feel like, what the enemy does with me. That's very true. And I love that you, you're able to acknowledge that because I think yes. it's something that's really hard to acknowledge or see. Or it's like as soon as you are starting to go through something, you're like, ah, I need to ask for prayer. Yes. Or I need to do this. And it's yes. like, yes, of course. Yes. We need to cover each other. And yes. that's something that we talk about, especially with the shield. Like the shield is like the only weapon that we can use for ourselves and for others. Yeah. And I think that there's so much power in that. What Nava wrote I in that section. I love that section. It's so good. Truth is my favorite. Like they're all so fire, but we talk a lot of what we're mentioning here at yeah. length and yeah. at depth yeah. and with such detail in the study, which will be launching soon. I'll have all the details in the description but i'm so excited this is so important if we could cover each other as friends Mm -hmm. if we could shield each other yeah because i mentioned in the in the study how if you gather shields together it becomes Mm -hmm. an armed barrier is that a dome like a dome around someone Mm -hmm. and that is why it's so important even when a woman gives birth Mm -hmm. that's what you're doing with a text chain like Mm -hmm. that's what you're doing with a prayer chain Mm -hmm. you're creating this wall of fire around this woman so that when she's literally giving birth Mm -hmm. there is no we're covering her in prayer so that nothing no schemes of the enemy get to come in or Mm -hmm. anything that tries to come and steal Mm, from a beautiful birth wait i just i feel like what i envision is like women covering someone else and then they're all like on guard but then yes. there's the two that are like coming in and like checking on her yes. in the middle like yes is this good Tucking is, in. is this yeah like yeah. just talking to her so i feel like if you have the two that you go to yes that know yes. a little bit more detail so yeah. they are more specific mm-hmm. but then the rest are like the whole prayer chain yeah and the whole prayer group because yeah. again the first point that we mentioned is gossip and it's so vulnerable when you open up your heart to someone mm-hmm. and then so many other people end up finding about it and i think a lot of women have gone through that a lot of women have walked through that so we all know that feeling Mm -hmm. and it's just not a good feeling and so being wise with your words being wise with who you share and pray about it first yeah like talk to the lord about it first yeah maybe there's someone who has authority in that area because they dealt with that same exact thing five years ago Uh so ask the lord to show you exactly who you should find in for that specific thing what would you say the third point would be God, I love friend. I love good friendships. It's so important. Once you have solid friendship, mm. you don't want anything else. Mm. And I feel like I tell Jordan this all the time, but I'm like, I love my girlfriend so much. I never want anything to happen. I love that. Like it's just, it's really changed my motherhood. It's mm. changed so much. But before I entered this season, the Lord had called me into solitude for like five years, mm. and I shared this with Nava yesterday. She's like, "What? Yeah." I- talk about this because i was so intrigued about what do you mean yeah so when jordan and i first got married we were 20 and we had had i had had friends from high school and college and us being the only ones that had been married the only ones like even in serious relationships like none of our friends were in a similar season and so that alone i think already eliminated so many of my friends not Mm. to say you can't hang out with people that are in the same season but i'm not going to hang out with my high school friends who are drinking getting drunk and going and sleeping at other guys houses when i have my own home with my husband Yeah. Just it's unwise to yeah. hang out with that type of crowd. So the Lord really did call me into a season of solitude where I just genuinely did not have many friends. I mean, I had my husband, I had my parents, I had my sister, mm. and I had like some girlfriends that I've been friends with since I was like three, yes. you know, and my cousins and stuff. But like mm. it wasn't it wasn't the group that I have now. And I feel like I learned so much in that season mm. and relied so much on the Lord when I know so much damage could have happened. And if I if I would have just hung out with whoever, whenever. And so I'm really thankful for that yes. season because I think the Lord saved me so much heartache. Yeah. Sure, it was kind of boring, yeah. but I was just newly married. So yeah. Jordan and I didn't really want to hang out with anyone That's anyway. so funny. <laughs> like we just wanted to wow. have sex because we had literally yeah. just gotten married. So, and we were 20. <laughs> so like that's, that was fine. We would have That's like his so occasional well. friends that, I mean, Jordan's mm-hmm. always been a big guy, guy yeah. group, guy friend. Yeah. So like most of the time on the weekends, his friends would be coming over and like, I love that. it'd be it's kind of like here them. and there sporadic, but not to the extent that my friendship is with my girlfriends mm. now. She and has, Melina has incredible friends. <laughs> 
I, I mean, prayed I'm still so long for that. Like I'm I prayed still building those that. five years. That's amazing. In I mean, those five years. I mean, you understand they, I sat, I've been here twice now and I've just watched how they pray for each other and champion mm-hmm. each other. Mm-hmm. One of her friends is about to get married. They just covered her. We covered her in yeah. prayer. Well, let's, and it was okay. Sweet. Did you remember your third? No. Okay. Well, we can, <laughs> I once, can say once what I remember, remember. I can tell you what I love. Well, that's about, what okay. I was going to say. I felt like it'd be a good transition to now share three things that a solid friend should yeah. do yeah. and solid friendship should have. Okay. And the first thing I was going to say is prayer. Yes. Like, I feel like if you leave a girl, like hanging out with your friends and you didn't cover yourself in prayer. Yeah, you should. You we got to do something. We got to yes. reevaluate. Yes. I was recently in this, I spoke somewhere and these, uh, these group of women, they prayed for this one woman. She shared so much. She opened her heart mm-hmm. about stuff that's going on with her husband mm-hmm. and basically that he really wants to get a divorce or whatever. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I want to fight for my marriage. Aww. But she didn't know how to do it because she wanted to give him space. Mm. So she, what she did was she was, she was letting her these women know but in a prayer way yes we were praying and she opened up mm. so we we came around her we covered her in prayer mm. but not only that i challenged because i wasn't from this era i was just there visiting and mm-hmm. sharing and i challenged all the women around them i said one girl said whenever you need me you just call me and i said no that's not what you do mm. you call her and you say mm. do you need me to fast for you mm. what can i fast for this week for you because mm. i've rarely met women that will fast for me melena wow And I, that's the first thing I do when I find, if you know me, my friends that know me, if they watch it, they'll know. Like, that's one of the first things I do. And granted, I do not fast food. I'm breastfeeding. I can't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's so many things that I love, Mm -hmm. that I indulge in, that I would, that I give up because I Mm -hmm. love this woman. Mm -hmm. So the the amount of time, even if it's something that's not sinful, you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just something that I could put aside. Yeah. That I could spend time. That I could spend time just completely covering my friend. Mm, that's so good. And I can, you share, and then I have a story. I want to okay. Share. Well, I have just a story that I wanted to mention about that. So I have a really good friend who just went back to her hometown. And this trip was more of like a mission trip. Mm. And leading up to it, we had a fast train and a prayer train. Leading up to the day that she left, the entire time she was there, and then the day she came back. Mm. And it was, it's just so powerful. And I think it's so beautiful. Like, I feel like the idea of prayer is so beautiful when it's always overflowing and yes. it's more of an extension of yeah. you. And it's like, I'll be praying for that. No, we're yeah. going to pray for that right now. Yes. Oh, and we're going to do love, that right now. I'm not going to tell you I'm going to pray like for that, you. Melina. I'm going to literally pray for you right yeah, now. I'm not going to wait till you leave. Yes. I don't have to wait to do the yes. dishes. I don't have to go. Like, we're going to do it on. now. Yes. <laughs> like, so because good. I think that's the, that's the step. That is the one. That's the, t- it's such a small, it's so yes. small. Yes. It's so small. Yes. But it's the thing that will make such a big difference. Come it's on. the thing that they get to actually hear what you're praying. Our you prayers know? can literally break down strongholds. Yeah. They can they can release so much into it. They can release angels. Mm-hmm. We see so much in the Bible about when mm-hmm. prayer happened. Mm-hmm. So much. And literally Literal Jesus walls came down. Walls came down. Yeah. And Jesus, when he was about to go on the cross, mm-hmm. he asked his closest people. Mm. He said, pray for me. Mm. And they couldn't stay awake. And like my question for y'all oh. watching is like, can you be that person? Wow. If God asked you to literally stay up that night to pray for your friend that is going through a miscarriage could you do that and it's so hard because we don't as women we love to just talk but are we walking it out (laughs) i have (laughs) chill wow it's so i want to okay i'm gonna share something real quick okay one of my closest friends she was told before she got married that she can't have children i shared this with you before and uh she had zero percent chance to have children probably like a year into her marriage i asked her one day i was like what are you doing uh what are you doing in prayer Mm. to get pregnant Mm. i know what you can do physically Mm -hmm. but what are we doing spiritually (laughs) you know what i mean (laughs) yeah and she was like i asked her i said have you fasted Mm. And she was like, well, I fasted before, but it was wrong, you know, wrong motives. So uh. many women say that. I'm mm. doing it for the wrong motives. So don't fast food. Mm. There's so much stuff. But okay, that's a different topic. <laughs> so I asked her, I was like, what, do you, what, what can I do with you? So I said, we're going to go on a fast together. And mm-hmm. I'm going to do this with you, and we're going to encourage each other. Mm-hmm. And I just want to fan your flame. I'm mm. just a side person, but I want you to know I'm, you're not doing this alone. Yeah. And it's, what's cool is that my husband actually ran a marathon with him, uh. with her husband. Mm-hmm. Uh, like during the season Mm -hmm. because he wanted to encourage him to go all the way. Mm. And I want to show that that's a physical picture of spiritually what's happening. Mm. My husband ran with him to keep his pace so that he would be able to go all the way. And he was able to finish a marathon and my husband cheered him on Mm -hmm. the whole way. And it was never about my husband. Mm. It was about him. 
Wow. And so I'm sharing this not for you to think, whoa, Nava. No, actually, I'm trying to provoke you to do it for your friends because you yes. have people all around you Who that, need that need you to do this. So I literally told my friend, I was like, I will be the side person, wow. but we are going to get you through and we're going to get you pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to give him no rest. God, no rest wow. till he does. That's Isaiah 62. He's talking about Jerusalem, but I felt that for my friend. Mm. So long story short, I told her, I was like, what are we going to do? We're going to fast. So she was like, okay, let's do it. Y'all, we fast not once not twice quite a few times mm. and she ended up getting pregnant with zero percent chance and it was so it cool, was you guys it was so cool because she was she was at my house in israel she literally takes a pregnancy test she didn't go tell her husband she was shaking she says nava she called me and she was like come here and we looked at this pregnancy test and it was me and her wow and i will i will probably never be in a moment like mm. that a sacred moment like that because mm -hmm. people always tell their husbands first i mean mm -hmm. that's obvious yeah but she wanted to make sure it was a positive because it was like the two lines and not the positive because uh -huh. we're in Israel. So she was like, before I tell him, I need you to tell me that it's shaking. I need you to wow. tell me I'm pregnant. And I looked at her and we had this moment and I was like, you're pregnant. That's insane. So it was like the holiest. We had this Elizabeth Mary moment mm. of like, I was pregnant oh, and we contended yeah. for each other. But yeah, it was just like this beautiful moment of like, mm -hmm. this is what friendship is for. Yes. I'm not here to just say, you're going to get pregnant one day. No, I'm going to hold your hand and say, we're mm -hmm. running yes. to God's yes. throne room together. Well, isn't that what Jesus does with us too? Yes. You exactly. know, I feel like it's like a, a constant reminder and overflow of how Jesus is with us. Our friendships yeah. and relationship with others should be yeah. an overflowing abundance of grace and love and what Jesus does for us day in and day out. And I know so many of us has, have experienced so much hurt in this area yeah. of friendship. Yeah. And so I just want to ask, like, pray that the Lord soften your heart again, yeah. because I think that can stop a lot of us from entering such yeah. beautiful relationships. So true. But when Jesus and serving one another is at the very center that won't happen yeah the second that you let the enemy come in and yeah. that's what our our friend group prays for all the time just protection like over just our entire yes. friend group in yes. general yes. you know because there's been it's just so blissful that i'm like yeah, uh, yeah. you know like you yes. know something yes <laughs> something about to go yes. down but I feel like we've just saturated it so much I and the Lord is just so clearly at the center that the enemy just literally has no foothold. I, you can cut this out if you what? want this to be, what? but I had one of the sweetest moments I've ever had. And if this is too sacred, you could take okay. this off. Okay. But last time me and Tori and Melena were together, Melena had just gotten really sick and she was getting over it and she mm -hmm. was fine. But her, your milk supply dropped. Oh, and yeah. She came, and I'll never forget this. It was like one of the holiest moments I've lived in. And it's so You're cool that we're, sh <laughs> we're sharing this after, like, so I had this moment with my friend Elizabeth that she wouldn't mind me sharing that because she shared it on her social media mm -hmm. about getting pregnant. And mm -hmm. that was such a holy moment I was in. And then mm -hmm. there was a moment where, so Melina's milk supply was low. And so she came in and she looked at me and Tori and she was like, oh, I need, she needs milk. And I don't have enough for her right now because I was sick. Will one of you breastfeed her? And it was like this, it was almost silent for a second because we were like, yes. <laughs> like, Tori was like, I'll do it first. And the piece of me was like, no, I want to do it first. I want to I wanna breastfeed And her. I don't know if you guys remember, but Evangeline would not <sighs> take a bottle. And I didn't have formula. I was in Florida. Yeah. I couldn't even get her to take a bottle, yeah. let alone a new room, a new, new room, yeah. new form. Like she was so weenie and so like oh, she was, she so was like perfect. six months old. She was just like the smallest little peanut. And yeah, when I got sick, like I didn't eat for like two days. And I remember I was power pumping. I was like doing everything possible, but it was just like at the end of it. And I remember she just kept getting so frustrated. But I was like, I have two friends out here who are literally nursing their babies and have an overflow and abundance oh, of on. milk. Yes. Like, I'm gonna ask them oh, it and it was, was just so, so beautiful and none so of them powerful. like it was it was just there's no way to describe that moment. I can't and as I like as I was nursing her I was like thinking first of all the beauty and humility that Melena carries to ask a question like that's so if you're a mom you know it's vulnerable admitting yeah. you have low milk like mm -hmm. you don't have a lot of milk Mm -hmm. It's such a vulnerable subject. Yeah. Because we're always talking about the ones, the leaking shirt. Like we're always talking yeah. about the overflow. Yes. So one, it was so vulnerable. But two, like when, I remember when I breastfed her, it was like I was covering Melena. Mm -hmm. I had her back. Yeah. Like I'll text Melena sometimes. I have your back, Melena. Mm -hmm. And I, it's just words. Well, but in a moment an like that. It's also an extension of me. Yes. You know, and that's what I think is so beautiful about. Yes. When you love someone's children. Yes. <gasps> because it's like I 
am going to hold you accountable for how yes. you are with your kids. Yeah. You're going to hold me accountable. Uh-huh. We are going to walk through motherhood together. Yes. And I'm going to make sure that your kids are in check because yeah. I want you to make sure my kids are in check. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it's just, it, again, when we talk about a village, it's not like, here, go take care of my kids. Yeah. No, it's like, help make sure yes. I'm in check so I yes. can take care of my kids. Yes. It's the village thing, I think it's thrown out of proportion i think people have a misunderstanding of that it's not like a group to just throw on your kids and have someone babysit so and so and no 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 no. i am here you're you're choosing women back it up you're making sure that what i'm doing with my kids is biblical you're making sure like we're in community with one another and that overflows into our children yeah your village is so much more than just like a group of people to help babysit your kids that's not what a village is one of melena's best friends megan took toques out um yeah. and she takes her out occasionally right uh-huh. when megan had her um what was it bachelor party? no it was her shower toques was on her lap the whole oh, yeah. time mm-hmm. and megan wasn't disturbed by no. it and it was just like why because this is so basically beautiful. her i don't know her her niece her like yeah. it's her family mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. she loves you mm-hmm. she loves her so mm-hmm. well yeah and Tooks is going to be able to feel confident around women of God. Right. And be like, when she grows up, she'll think, she won't just think, what did Mama do? Mm. She'll think about, what did Megan do? What did Aaliyah do? Like, she'll think of these women. What did Melanie do? Yeah. It's like I'm giving her Titus two women already. Yes. I'm like already giving to her, her their, mentors. Yes. Oh, it's so Oh, it's so beautiful to see what God designed yes. actually played out. Yes. Because I think a lot of times we see what the enemy has taken and distorted. Because yeah. the enemy doesn't create, he just distorts what's already been created. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of what we see in the world is a perverted and distorted version of what God created. And then we get confused. And preach, it's like, girl, preach. <laughs> we get confused. And it's like, what are you confused about? Yeah. That's not what Go God back created. To the original. God did and see this. What he did. Yeah. This is what it's supposed to look like. Whatever you see outside of that is what the enemy yeah. has taken and perverted mm-hmm. so don't be upset about god about something fallen people have done and yeah. continue to do yeah. and don't That's take so control good. over their own actions mm-hmm. you have to be disciplined yeah like i'll be honest it's not all, like i feel like you have to be selfless to be a good friend yes. in order to be a good fr- want you have a good to be friend, a maiden you have to be a good friend mm-hmm. like and an most Esther, of the time it will take Esther. it will take a lot more for you to pour out yeah. first before you get poured yes. into and p- getting poured back into should never be the goal that's manipulation that's yeah. jezebel yeah because then you're thinking i'm gonna do this for yeah. this person mm-hmm. so that when i need help they'll do this for me yes. no jezebel that's not what we do yeah. that's not what christ does yeah you pour out because yeah. you have an and abundance keep, of pouring you and have that's it. it that's my love gift. keeps no record of wrong no. love there's no strings attached no. and that's so hard exactly that's what i, I was gonna to, say i, I feel like that's... myself i've been prophesied over or prayed over my whole life you're an esther mm. and i believe i believe that god is calling me to be an esther but mm-hmm. guess what you're an esther melanie's an esther my mm. sister's an esther all my my friends like every single woman is called to mm-hmm. a place yeah she will live that out in mm-hmm. a way and who are her maidens so i used mm. to think i'm the esther i used to walk around thinking it was me mm. and then the lord was like start cleaning toilets kid you not melina <laughs> for, for a season god asked me to clean toilets That's like beautiful. we would we'd go in public places and the lord because why because god wanted to teach me that i'm here to serve Mm -hmm. others Mm -hmm. and it i i live this out this this um jesus once spoke and he said he said that when you go to someone's house don't sit at the the nicest place of the Mm -hmm. table go sit at the lowest place of the table Mm -hmm. and if they invite you if they if he elevates us Mm -hmm. then we go Mm -hmm. and some people might take this in the wrong context Mm -hmm. but i want you to understand that when you are following the lord Mm -hmm. serving is part of it Mm -hmm. and when you're getting a deeper heart of Jesus, mm-hmm. serving is just fruit because mm-hmm. that is who Jesus is. Yeah. We kind of talk about that in righteousness because I, right, in the study. Yes. I feel like we kind of go into that. Yes. But it's important. It's it important is. that we live out. You're an Esther. How can I serve you mm-hmm. so that you are everything God has called you to be? And that's being a maiden. That's not being right. like, I'm less. I have my second point yeah, of go. a good quality. They're not intimidated by you. Yes. Because oftentimes, again, the enemy is so sneaky. Yeah. And if I see Nava thriving, that doesn't mean I'm not thriving. No. <laughs> like, I cannot, we cannot compare yeah. each other. Yeah. God designed us each so beautifully, yeah. uniquely, and yeah. we all have our own calling. Nava's over here. 
Yeah. I'm over here. Let's champion what each other. What she's doing has nothing yeah. to do with me yeah. and what I'm like. Yeah. Th- it does not interfere with me. Yeah. It does not interrupt me. No. And it's so disheartening when I it's get beautiful. questions. I got a DM a couple of days ago and this girl was like, I'm always so envious of your stories. And I'm like, for what? Yeah. You're seeing my social media. Yeah. You're not seeing my life. Yeah. I think That's one so of the good. biggest things that I've done this past year has been removing my life from social media. And yeah. y'all be, might be like, huh? Yeah. But if you've lived in my home, yeah. you know what I'm talking yeah. about. You, you see my life. Yeah. And then you see what's on social media. They're yeah, different. Yeah. I've distinguishedly made them different. Yeah. Um, not in a way to be false, but I keep my life on my life is private. Yeah. And then I have my social media. Yeah. They're just different. You're the same. You're the same in both. Right. You're just there's some things are sacred to the family that you have to protect as a mother yes and for the longest time i feel like i didn't protect that and everything was just for everyone and it's that's not how it's supposed to be everything is not for everyone and so i feel like one of the biggest things i've tried this year is to just really set the line but it just was so disheartening because i was like what does what i'm doing on a tuesday have to do with what you're doing on a tuesday no it has nothing to no nothing Nothing. the lord can use you Mm -hmm. and me and everyone else why did he tell us to be free fruitful and multiply because he needs all of us yeah he just doesn't need I'm, one i might wear something melena would never wear and that's yeah. what's so beautiful because even with modesty i feel mm-hmm. like this is we're all learning right i'm not at a place i don't know everything mm-hmm. god is still convicting me so much about stuff i wear mm-hmm. but you're able to also encourage me in that mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah. that's what's so beautiful mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. we're just here to encourage each other yeah. i'm not here to if you just looked at me and said you were just dressing so bad. <laughs> like, I wouldn't want to hang out. You know what I mean? But if you're like, oh, this is prettier on so you. so much grace. This would look, br- yeah. There's yes, such a beautiful so way true. as there, friends there so to much champion grace. each other mm-hmm. and not tear each other down. Even if that's your opinion, hold that tongue. Be careful. Take every Be thought wise, Because you could ruin a f- beautiful friendship yeah, with one true. word of correction that comes out of the wrong tone. That's very true. You that's have to be wise. True. My last point was going to be conviction. Yeah. And I was going to elaborate on that because like one of the things that I think is really hard is criticism. Mm -hmm. And I think women are being criticized at every single point. So I think it's really vulnerable when a woman is with her good friend and she's Mm -hmm. getting criticized or maybe it is a true conviction and maybe it actually is something that she truly needs to work on. But I am not in the place to tell her that. Mm. And so you need to take it to the Lord. Mm. And I feel like my sister does such a good job at this because she does such a good job of taming her tongue and she will pray about it. And she said, like the other day, she said something. She's like, Melina, I prayed about this yesterday and the Holy Spirit already revealed it to you and you're already working on it. Like wow. it was so cool. It was actually in the beginning of the summer. I went to do our like garden in the back and I had pots from our previous home. And I was like, no, I just want to get some new pots. Like I feel like they'll, those are from the old house. They won't yeah. fit. She said nothing. And she prayed about it that night. And then I felt convicted about like material things. And I was like, no, me not buying stuff goes beyond just my wardrobe. It goes like in everything. And so if I have a pot, I'm going to use that pot. It makes no sense. But I feel like it's just habit. It's a habit, a new habit that I'm trying to form. And so she prayed about it. And then the next day I was like, actually, I don't think I need to go to home goods anymore. I have pots in the back. She goes, oh, ha. she goes, that was fast. She's like, yeah. I didn't even take 24 hours for that to get answered. That's funny. And it's just like she didn't have to say a single word. The Holy Spirit convicted me in that. And so maybe just the way that you live out yeah. and the way that you That's serve so your right. husband, the way that you talk to your husband might convict a wife about yeah. how she talks to her husband. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think love that you guys, you and Melanie do such a good job because. I'm so thankful for Melanie. Oh my gosh, she she's so like she serves. Mm-hmm. She comes in your house and she just cleans. Mm-hmm. She does, but she also just loves. She feels the atmosphere so much love. She yeah. plays with the kids. Mm-hmm. Then she watches, but then she just sits with you and she'll just have such a deep conversation, or just encouraging you. Yeah. She yeah. gave me a compliment the other day, and I was like, "Wow, the way you <laughs> said that is so." <laughs> so powerful she just spoke right to me Mm. and she stopped and so i feel like that's something so beautiful as women like Mm -hmm. even with my sister Mm -hmm. i told her i was going to do the the 10 clothing items three uh shoes five Mm -hmm. makeup products whatever and she was like i'm gonna do it with you Mm. yeah i mean it's so fun that's that's hard that's a hard thing to do and she but it's automatically was like so fun for you because you're like okay i'm not not alone alone." when she said that i was like wow i can do this Mm -hmm. and i want to say that into prayer too and in this whole topic of like when you have someone come alongside you be like Mm -hmm. no you're not alone i'm Mm -hmm. gonna do this with you Mm -hmm. it 
been so powerful because Mm -hmm. there's women all around us that have really hard marriages Mm -hmm. and the woman like just like my friend she's having a really hard time Mm. but we pray together once a week Mm. we pray together once a week and that's like you can say i love you but what is love walked out like how Mm. does that look like Mm -hmm. when you really are walking Mm -hmm. with women that like you're really encouraging them yeah and you, we're not perfect. None of us are perfect. Melanie and I aren't perfect. We're just trying to like walk out this life and just advance, make heaven leak onto this mm-hmm. earth. I feel like we, I like to provoke. Yes. I feel like we can always, there's always something that the Lord can work on us. Mm-hmm. And I think for a long time, I was in a place where I was like, no, I just, I'm so busy right now. I don't have time to be working on that. Yeah. And I think we've like a lot of women fall into that or it's like, no, that's like too much at once. Yeah. And so, conviction is my next the the main thing i wanted to say about good friendship because mm. every time i hang out with my girlfriends i feel like i leave convicted yeah. and provoked yes to change or do something different that's and i so think good. that's so beautiful mm. like i love witnessing how my friends submit to their husbands yeah. it provokes me yes. it yes. inspires me and then the next time i get into an argument in my mind i'm like no i remember when so and so yes had this similar yes. argument and mm-hmm. she did this mm-hmm. and so I That's feel so called to do that too. And I'm not that. replacing my friends with Jesus. Like I'm not, yeah. I want to be more like Jesus, not like my friend, but it's an example of a situation that I might be going through that I'm like, okay, yeah. Wow. I love that. Yeah. I want to be like that too. Yes. You know, like, I don't know. I just feel like the provoking and the convicting in a graceful way. Yes. Cause be you so want to, you want to leave different. You yes. want to leave your friends different than when you came in mm. and that's, it's discipline. It's hard. Mm-hmm. It's so hard mm-hmm. <laughs> sometimes. You have to but die it's, to but your But there's fruit. There's so much fruit to, oh, yeah. uh, to all of the, the stuff we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Because, I don't know, Even I see this even in my marriage of like when I spend time with women that, that just speak well. That they use their tongue mm-hmm. wisely. Just everything we're talking about. That we mm-hmm. don't gossip together. Mm-hmm. I leave and I'm like, wow, I feel so filled up. Yes. And that's what we're supposed yes. to do to each other. I always like even thought, the last few days. Like, listen, I always thought I was an introvert. It's because I was hanging out with people that were sucking the life out of me. Yes. I'm not an introvert. Yeah. Yeah, you. I am with, with the people yeah. who suck that's the life so out of me, good. who are spiritually dead. Yeah, that's when I'm an introvert. Yeah, because you're. But when looking. I am with my girlfriends, like I hang out with my girlfriends at least once a week, and I see you when you're after <laughs> the time with your friends, you're like full I of feel joy. Like I, yes, and, and you I pour leave. out. There was, there was. We had this conversation last time with one of the girls about yeah. just stuff she's walking through, and we just poured and poured and poured, and it filled us up. Yes, it filled us up exactly. our faith mm-hmm. to be like, wow. We could encourage women so much mm-hmm. that we live, we mm-hmm. leave super filled up. Yeah. And that's, that's the goal. Yeah. Because then I feel like sometimes it's like, oh, I'm going to go hang out with my girlfriends. And then I would just leave and I'd be like, oh, I need to take a nap. Yeah. Yes. It's the wrong girlfriends. Yeah. If that's how you yeah. feel after you hang yeah. out with a girlfriend, it's the wrong girlfriend. And you know what? Even the hard, t- even through the hard times I've walked with my friends, mm. when we walk through stuff where we've wept together and it's mm. been hard, even us on the phone together, mm-hmm. talking through things and being mm-hmm. like, wow, that was a really hard, you leave and you, even the hard stuff, you yeah. can leave filled up. Mm-hmm. You can leave filled up. Yeah. Because I wonder, I, I just want to make sure that women listening to this are not like, well, maybe they're not talking about the deep stuff, the painful stuff. No, oh, I'm sure no, you, you wept. You so can. I'm sure you've wept with your girls and I have wept with my friends. Mm-hmm. I've walked through breakups with my friends. Mm-hmm. But the goal is to love on them so mm-hmm. well mm-hmm. that they are filled up. Yeah. That they've wept, but they do mm-hmm. feel full. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, we literally, we, I walked through my miscarriage with you. Yes. And I, I think sometimes women are afraid to want to share that stuff because, like, I don't yeah. want to be the Debbie Downer. It's like, yeah. sis, we are all yeah. going through yes. something. You do, n- we're not, you're not Debbie Downer. We literally want to cover you. We want to come alongside you. And I think the mm-hmm. beauty with that is that then you're able to take this and apply it to other friends because I have my close girlfriends, but that doesn't mean that's all I'm hanging out with. Yeah. I think sometimes that can be confusing of like you have your girlfriends and that's all you hang out with and you're no. not nice to other women right not, yeah. no that is so false yeah. because then I feel like I apply what I've learned with my girlfriends and I see the beauty and then when I do hang out with someone else who might not be a believer or someone else they're yeah. like wow yeah. they like get mind blown yeah they're like what 
is this? That's so good. They've only ever experienced the gossip yeah. and the slander mm-hmm. and like the negativity and just all of the worldly things. So it's just like a, a whole cup to them. They're like, wow, they just want to dump it on their heads because they've never experienced it. I had it. a really, I had a really good friend that I love and I missed her. And I was like, I missed her because she's in Israel and I was mm. spending time in America. And then mm-hmm. I came back this last season mm-hmm. and we got close again. And I literally told my husband, I was like, I can't spend time with her. She's dragging me down. Mm. And it was really hard. I was like, God, I want to spend. Mm. She's not a believer. And like, I love her so deeply. Mm. But she would make me feel like complete. Like she'd make me feel like a really bad mom. Mm. And I, we talked about this yesterday. Mm. Like I get told a lot that I'm a good mom. But even if people didn't tell me I was a good mom, Mm -hmm. I know I'm a good mom. Mm -hmm. I spend so much. I spend all my time with my kids. I love on them. I give Mm -hmm. them. But I'm also like, I'm confident in who God's called me to be as a mother. Yeah. But she's just, she would say these little comments. Mm. And I was like, I know this isn't truth. And I would go mm. back and ask the people I do trust, mm. what what is this? And they're like, nah, but that's not true to who mm. you are. And I feel like the Lord was like, it's time for you not to spend time with this girl. Mm. And it was really hard because yeah. I love her. Mm. But the second I released it, I felt this like, okay, mm. this wasn't true. A lie was trying to stick to me mm-hmm. and that wasn't true. Mm-hmm. And just other comments she would say about, yeah. she'd say stuff about my hair or like mm. other stuff that like, I know I have good and healthy hair. <laughs> I don't need, you know what I mean? There's just like truths and then there's things that aren't true. Yeah. And she was dragging me down. I felt the dragging mm. and I quickly needed to take care of it. Yeah. Because I, so good. the Lord is taking me to places mm. and I need those girlfriends to run with me. Yes. I'm not trying to run alone to places. I want to run with mm-hmm. the company of women that's why that's why we're releasing this prayer guide Mm. or this study we're releasing it because we want to run with women Mm -hmm. god is doing something in mothers and in mothers to be Mm -hmm. where we need to be going together i mean battle hand in hand we can make a bigger difference together Mm -hmm. we can even i want to apply that to the kingdom realm like when we pray together we are Mm -hmm. able to push back the enemies psalms psalms 44 says we push back the enemy in his strength Mm. so we are gathering together with our arm with our faith Mm. and we literally take back ground that the enemy has tried to take from us and our families yeah by praying and covering each other Mm -hmm. i talk about this in in thing and i'll say it real quick a soldier doesn't go to battle by himself right he goes with his general he goes Mm. with his his platoon he goes Mm. with a company of Mm. people and that's so wise. We do not go to places that one Jesus is our commander, that he mm-hmm. does not call us to go. Mm. But if God is calling us to take back ground and to pray for things, like my friend Elizabeth, mm. she was told she cannot have children. And I, I felt like I told her that is your ground. Mm. You take back that territory. Wow. And we pushed back the enemy together in his strength, mm. not our strength. Yes. And we have ability as women and mothers to do that for each other. Mm-hmm. But we're not. Like yeah. we are, but we're not. There's so much more impact we could do if we could just understand the weapons, the spiritual weapons that God has given us. Mm-hmm. The armor of God is not just for some people. Right. It's for all of us. Yeah. Because there's warfare all around us. Everywhere we go. All day long. It's so good. I love talking Ooh. to you. I know we could just keep going. And going. <laughs> I know. Y'all have no idea. <laughs> I know, like we get fiery about something. We're like, let's stay here. Let's I camp know, on I this know. subject. It's so good. We're but so we're also excited. staying accountable to each other with yes. certain things. Yeah. Like Nava and I, before she leaves, we wanted to write down like a whole list of things that we want to keep each other accountable for. Because you need to be doing that too. Yeah. Like, it's hard. They, these are things that are hard. Like, like I said before, it's not easy mm-hmm. going against the stream. Mm-hmm. You need your company of people mm-hmm. to do it with. Mm-hmm. And then you don't feel alone too. Yeah. I feel like oftentimes as Christians, we feel so alone. We're the only ones doing that or we feel so radical. And it's like, yeah. there's nothing radical about following Jesus and yeah. being set apart from the yeah. world. That's literally what he tells us to do. Yes. So don't feel like you're crazy. Yeah. You're just hanging out with the wrong people. Yeah. You think you're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, friend. I love um, you. Thanks for coming. Oh, it's so fun to be here. Hopefully uh, you come to Nashville soon. Yeah. And yeah. then um, we can do another one of these. Mm-hmm. That'd be fun. Yeah, we so. But should. hey, we can't wait for you guys to read this. Yeah, it's so good. And it's so good. Oh, I can't. We'll wait. have all the details linked below. When we're recording this, we don't know the exact launch date. Yeah. So, but it definitely within the next couple of weeks. So y'all I be on the lookout. Wait, it's so uh, fire. It's so good. It's so good. I'm so excited. Love all you. Right. Love you. Bye, guys. Bye.